Hello, this is Dr. Adrian, MD, and my, my lovely wife, Marilyn, uh, who I asked to join me uh, for this video. In this uh, discussion, we will be discussing um, alternative treatments for hypothyroidism and my approach um, to hypothyroidism. Uh, quite a few years ago, I became familiar with um, the the, dr the drug uh, you know, porcine or desiccated porcine thyroid, which is pig thyroid. And many doctors were claiming that patients were not responding clinically or symptomatically to their, um, their synthetic prescription thyroid. In fact, back in my training back in residency, you know, I remember the discussion that not everybody with, quote, mixed edema, not every patient with high, severe hypothyroidism will experience complete symptomatic relief. And I remember patients I saw back then, and I wondered, you know, why was it that here I am prescribing the appropriate dose of the uh, prescription synthetic thyroid, and the patient is still complaining of the symptoms uh, of hypothyroidism, and, and the patient's miserable, they're tired, they're cold, they have swelling in their ankles. But I just, you know, I, I learned that that can happen. Um, it was years later that I became then acquainted with uh, desiccated um, porcine or pig thyroid. Uh, in my office, we use uh, RLC Labs Nature Throid, which I've had good success with. And I've heard many um, famous doctors lecture about the use of you know, porcine thyroid. And of course, the greatest teacher to me is one patient at a time who comes to see me. And um, so I've had patients come to me who have made a change. They came to me, for instance, on a synthetic thyroid, the, the often uh, more so women, and their, th their uh, eyebrows are uh, missing on the lateral third. Uh, they're still tired, they're depressed, their eyelashes have fallen out, their hair's thinning. And I change the patient over to an equal dose of, of porcine thyroid, um, and e even with the equal TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone test result, and the patient is a different person, where the eyelashes have come back, the eyebrows have come back. Uh, remember the one patient, she was the CEO of a company, it looked like she had a wig on all of a sudden. Her hair had come back so much thicker than it was on the taking the previous synthetic thyroid. Um, now, this doesn't apply to all patients. Not all patients uh, require a change. Um, but if you are taking thyroid medication and you're still tired, you have cold hands and feet, uh, your weight is up, you can't lose weight, you're tired, you're depressed, you can't think clearly, uh, your job is a struggle, your hair is thinning, um, then you may want to see a doctor like myself to get prescription um, porcine thyroid. There are many websites and books out there which are discussing um, this, this issue um, and because many patients are experiencing the same thing. Now, as medical doctors, we are taught that you're better off prescribing the, the synthetic form because, quote, it's more consistent in dose. In my experience, I have had just excellent results in consistency of lab testing, consistency of symptomatic relief using the porcine thyroid. I have not seen any inconsistency with the use of um, nature, thyroid, nature thyroid, which we were using here for years. Um, and in fact, I believe my wife can give testimony to the fact that we've tried her on both uh, thyroids. And I'll let you just speak on your own here. Well, for uh, about 20 years, I was on synthetic thyroid medication. Um, and for the most part, it wasn't bad. Um, you know, it didn't manage to maintain a lot of my symptoms. Uh, my hands and feet were still extremely cold. Um, but there reached a point, and I don't know how old I was, but it just stopped working. I was exhausted all the time. Uh, the doctors said to me, a conventional doctor said, well, your, your uh, levels are in the right range. There's really nothing more I can do for you. And I said, well, I've been doing some reading. Um, you know, uh, I read about uh, natural uh, thyroid uh, medication. You know, is that my candidate for that? And the conventional doctor was hesitant to even consider it. Um, 
And then I met Dr. Adrian, and um, he, as my physician, switched me over, and uh, the results were amazing. Literally within, I think it was maybe about six to eight hours of taking the new dosage of natural uh, thyroid medication with the Nature Throid, um, my energy level was back to normal. I was happy. Um, it had made a remarkable difference in my life and um, I don't think I have any desire to ever switch back. So um, for those for those of you who have thyroid condition and uh, you're just not feeling as well as you could be, um, this might be a good alternative for you. So I urge you to seek out um, this form of natural thyroid replacement just to see if it makes a difference for you. Now, um, many, the one question would be, so what is different? between the porcine thyroid and the, prescri the synthetic prescription thyroid. Well, the nature thyroid contains not only T4, but it contains T3. T3 is the active form in, uh, of thyroid hormone. That is what actually exerts the, the benefits on the tissues uh, in the body. And the T4 is the uh, reserve or repository form that can be converted over to T3. Now, many people have poor conversion. Uh, this is a theory that they, they don't convert T4 to T3 very well. Um, so that's w one explanation. Uh, another uh, theory would be that there, uh, there's uh, tissue resistance to thyroid hormone, much the same way a type 2 diabetic uh, can have tissue resistance, to, uh, receptor resistance, resistance to the insulin. Because um, there are patients of mine that in order for them to be uh, clinically, euthyroid, uh, which is meaning that they, they feel like their thyroid dose is, is uh, normal, that I need to raise the dose until their TSH is even suppressed. Now, uh, that is a minority of, of the um, patients that I treat. Um, uh, th many patients come in who are reading books who want to overdose on thyroid. I uh, discourage overdosing and I teach patients you know, the symptoms of overdosing, um, such as you know, palpitations, uh, being nervous or jittery. Um, sometimes you're unmasking um, their caffeine they've been, they've been eating. I find that patients will replace a thyroid deficiency with caffeine. You know, the caffeine is, um, is their substitute, it's a poor substitute for you know, thyroid hormone because you know, caffeine actually accelerates aging. It, it, it can tear your health down. Um, so getting them on the proper dose of thyroid and decreasing caffeine is often the, the perfect mix. Um, now, can you um, explain a little bit about it? Because I've heard some women say, well, it'll help with weight loss. And I think there are some dangers uh, if people over-medicate um, well, correct, thyroid. Correct. And maybe you can explain a little bit about, you know, from a cardiac perspective, the dangers of taking too much thyroid without, uh, without supervision? Well, it's important for any physician to monitor the patient's dose uh, and, uh, and through laboratory testing. Um, many patients do lose significant weight when they begin taking nature thyroid, but it's not every patient. There's other reasons for gaining weight. So if you think that just taking thyroid is going to make you lose weight, that is uh, not the goal. If you happen to lose weight, uh, treating you appropriately with thyroid, then and then th that's a good thing. Um, now, there's other hormones um, at play here as well. You know, birth control pills can slow thyroid function. The synthetic estrogens and, and, and progestins and the deficiency of progesterone that we get with birth control pills actually worsen uh, thyroid function. These synthetic estrogens raise TBG, thyroid binding globulin, thereby tying up or binding the active thyroid hormones, making the patient more hypothyroid. So if you have a history of taking synthetic estrogens and being progesterone deficient, you may be clinically hypothyroid. So I, I, I tend to give the combination of progesterone with thyroid frequently. And this is why we tend to see hypothyroidism more often in women because it is related to uh, estrogen dominance and progesterone deficiency. It all, it all uh, works together here, uh, either for you or against you, depending upon your hormonal balance and what, what medications you're taking. 
Um, one other thing I think is worth noting, um, when I was uh, trying to get uh, pregnant um, and couldn't, you know, no one, no one knew why I was trying to do a second, um, second child, and there was nothing wrong with me, my health was good, um, and so it turned out that I was, that's when I was diagnosed as hypothyroid um, at that time uh, in my uh, late 20s. And so I didn't realize, maybe you can explain a little bit about um, how being hypothyroid um, can interfere with the attempts of becoming pregnant. Um, well, we know that treating thyroid is, a, uh, is one of the most important things that any infertility specialist would do is the first detect whether the, the, um, the would-be mother is deficient in thyroid hormone. So uh, thyroid does play a, a role on fertility in, in women. So replacing that uh, is, um, is essential and also making sure that you're not over replacing is also essential. Now uh, I want to point out that uh, there are other things you can take to improve thyroid function besides just taking prescription thyroid. And so I would encourage patients to take an, uh, an appropriate dose of iodine either through, through um, you know, kelp or other sea vegetables like uh, dulse or uh, you know, the other um, seaweeds like hajiki, there's quite a few of those. Uh, we sell ca uh, kelp capsules on the website. Seaweed is a good source of trace minerals, including iodine. We also carry a water-soluble iodine trichloride, which is a, um, uh, called atomidine on the website, and this can also serve as an iodine source. Uh, the recommended dose on that product is one drop per day, uh, but many patients will, will cycle uh, atomidine um, as well based upon, if you Google cycling atomidine, you'll see there's many different proposed regimens such as one drop day one, day, uh, two drops day two, three, three, four, four, five, five, five drops on day five, and then stopping for two weeks. And the theory behind that is that cycling the iodine may jumpstart your endocrine system because the thyroid has impact on, on, the, on the entire endocrine system. So, but you do not want to overdose on iodine because too much iodine can actually suppress thyroid function. Um, so, I think that covers um, hypothyroidism in general. So, if you came to see me, um, I would examine you. I would again look for all the clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism. We would check your labs, perhaps a free T3, free T4, reverse T3, which is the imposter for T3 and high levels of reverse T3 are uh, known to impair uh, the T3 function. Um, but if you fit all the symptoms of hypothyroidism and your labs are borderline normal, I tend to give an um, empiric trial, which means I'm treating the patient's symptoms, not the lab, of a very low dose of nature thyroid to see if the patient says, yeah, I feel better on that, uh, you know, can I stay on that? And, but even if we do treat you empirically, we still will then monitor your labs and make sure we're not uh, you know, dosing you excessively. It does not require much in this kind of patient. Um, uh, and this reminds me of uh, studies also that I've even seen presented at uh, lectures down at, uh, by Harvard and Johns Hopkins regarding treating what the, is known as subclinical or borderline hypothyroidism. And in these studies, including a, uh, a very uh, extensive meta-analysis where they, they pull existing studies on treating borderline hypothyroidism, we saw a, uh, a dramatic decrease in cardiovascular death. So if you are hypothyroid and you're not treating it, you are probably increasing your, your risk of cardiovascular disease, specifically heart attack, which is myocardial infarction. Um, we know that taking thyroid can lower cholesterol as well. So, um, of course, overdosing on thyroid can cause, um, you know, heart arrhythmias, you know, abnormal rhythms like AFib or atri atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Um, so it's important to you know, um, not overdose on these. Now, I see patients who get over from overseas, they get porcine thyroid, which is unregulated from overseas, and they take this on their own. And typically, these patients who come in are actually making themselves hyperthyroid. And, um, and so this can put you into a serious arrhythmia. 
So I'd recommend that you do not self-treat with uh, any overseas product that you have shipped to yourself. Uh, that is, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not convinced these products have the, uh, the consistency of, uh, of, the, of the two approved um, manufacturers in this, in this country of porcine thyroid, which I, I choose to use at Nature Thyroid, which I, I, for various reasons. Um, so anyhow, that should answer most of your questions. Um, feel free to make an appointment. Um, um, and thank you for tuning in to Dr. Adrian, MD.